Hi everyone, Professor Bob Young back at you here. In this instructional video, we are going to talk about solving trigonometric equations. So we'll look at the notes here to start out this uh, lesson, and it says, a trigonometric equation is an equation that contains a trigonometric expression with a variable such as sine x, you might have cosine x, tangent x, all the different things in there. And we have seen that some trigonometric equations are identities, such as sine square x plus cosine square x equals 1. These equations are true for every value of the variable for which the expressions are defined. Now, in this section, we're going to consider trigonometric equations that are true for some values of the variable, and the values that satisfy such an equation are its solutions. Now note that some trigonometric equations will have no solutions, so we're trying to go through a lot of different examples and give you some ideas on how to solve and do these. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first example here says find all solutions of the equation cosine some angle x equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now what I like to do on these is to tell students that we have learned in past lessons that you can use what is called the arc cosine, inverse cosine, or what Young likes to deem the angle getter. So if you take the inverse cosine of both sides of this equation, you will get to the angle we are after. Now remember, inverse cosine means that what angle is the cosine equal to the square root of 3 over 2? So I always like to draw a unit circle, okay, and, I, and we should know now because we've had so many quizzes and stuff that one answer is going to be pi over 6 radians, all right? Now, there's also, so your calculator should give you this one. It might give you the decimal equivalent of pi over 6 or some of the newer calculators will actually give you the pi over 6 in radians, all right, which will check, by the way, if you plug it back in for the angle there. But the other angle that your calculator won't give you, and this is why it's so important to know your unit circle, it's the, the cosine of x is also the square root of 3 over 2 at this angle, which I hope you know is 11 pi over 6. Now, when they want you to find all solutions of this equation, what we're going to do is remember the periodic nature of the circle is we are going to go ahead and add what is called 2 pi n to each angle. Okay. So in other words, when n, n is going to be an integer in this case, so when n is 0, uh, x will be pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. When n is 1, so in other words, you might start at this angle, but you can add 2 pi, add 2 pi, add 2 pi. So if you kept doing that, you would get pi over 6, and if you keep adding 2 pi to that, you'll get 13 pi over 6, and if you add 2 pi, you'll get 25 pi, so it will keep landing on this first angle over and over again, or you could even um, subtract 2 pi, you know, and get values that will still satisfy this equation. So these are what we call all solutions of x, and it's not a bad idea to go ahead and write those out uh, in the first place when you go to do these. Okay. All right, so for example two, we're going to find all solutions of the equation 4 sine theta minus 1 equals 2 sine theta. Now, in trigonometric equations, it's almost like thinking about algebraic equations. Let's say we brought this over here on the side, and we had 4x minus 1 equals 2x. So in algebra, what you would try to do is get all the variables on one side equal to all the numbers on the other side. All right, so what we're going to do here is the same thing, but we're going to do it with a trig function. So what we're going to do on this one is subtract 2 sine theta from both sides of the equation first, which will give us 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And then go ahead and get all the numbers on the right side, just like we would do in this example in algebra. And that would give us 2 sine theta equals 1. Now, just like we're trying to get x by itself and solve for what x is, no numbers in front or anything, we are going to do the same thing here by dividing both sides by 2. So in this case, we'll get the sine of theta equals 1 half. 
Now again, where is that at on the unit circle? All right, you can go ahead and use your um, take the inverse sign of both sides, the arc sign of both sides, and your calculator. Hey, look, we landed in the same spot we were at the other one here. It's going to be where the y value is one half is pi over six. All right, so that's one similar answer to our first example. All right, but where's the other one, Young? Now remember, y, if you're looking at sine, I'm always thinking y or cosine, I'm thinking x. The other y value is going to be over here that's equidistant and across y here. All right, so we're going to write these two answers. Theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Or, and again, it says find all solutions over here. So you always want to read the directions and make sure you're answering what they're after. And hopefully you know what this angle is. I know I have students sometimes in my lecture classes that will struggle not knowing their circle where they really need to. And you'll get 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now again, you plug pi over 6 in the original equation, this will check 5 pi over 6, just like when you were solving equations in algebra. I always encourage my students to make sure you plug in and those answers make sense to you. Okay, so continuing example 3 here, and I want to try to give you as many examples as I can, and I try to take these from the homework I assigned, so they'll be similar here. On this one, we're going to go ahead and take the inverse cosine of both sides first. Again, undoes, the inverse undoes the cosine or has that inverse operation there. All right, and if you do it to one side of something equal, you must do it to both sides or what Young likes to call BS. <laughs> All right, so what that leaves us with, a little bit different than our first two examples, we end up with 2x plus pi over 4 equals, now where is the cosine, the square root of 2 over 2? So let me come over here and draw myself a little unit circle here. I should, now you're, again, your calculator will probably give you the pi over 4 one in either decimal or in actual radian form here. But again, you have to know again where the cosine is the square root of 2 over 2, and that would be down here in this quadrant where across the x-axis these are going to be the same value, and you must know it's 7 pi over 4 here. Now here's the deal on this one. So you've got a lot more than just a given angle here, so you have to take this and set it equal to where the inverse cosine is this, pi over 4. Or we're going to do the same thing here. Take this and um, set it equal to 7 pi over 4. And we can also go ahead and since these are, again, not any certain distance apart, and we're going to get to ones that are more different in type than this, but let me just not get ahead of myself here. We'll go ahead and put plus 2 pi in on those. So on both of these, we're going to end up subtracting to get x by itself, pi over 4 from both sides. So I'll just come down here and do that on all these. All right, and I'll bring this over on the side so you can see it better. So it's going to be 2x equals 0 plus 2 pi n, or 2x equals 7 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 would be 6 pi over 4, which would reduce to 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And we're almost there. We almost got x by itself. So we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 2 all the way through here in both of these. And here will be our all solution answers here. So we're going to say x equals, now 0 over 2 is 0, and anything plus 0 is itself. So I'm just going to concern myself with the 2 pi n over 2 and just say x equals pi n in the first equation, or x is going to equal 3 pi over 2 divided by 2, multiplying by the reciprocal would be 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. And again, if you wanted to check, you know, let n be 0, x will be 0, let n be 1 here, pi, 2, 2 pi, 3, 3 pi, and same thing down here, 3 pi over 4 plus pi would be 7 pi over 4, and you would get uh, many answers for that. 
all right? So I hope as we're kind of going through these, you'll get a little feeling on how to progress on these. So thus far, we have found all solutions of the equations. All right, looking at these next two examples, example four, I'm going to try to throw some more twists and turns at you and see the different types of equations involved here. Now notice this one has a tangent square x in it, and it wants you to find all solutions between 0 and 2 pi this time. It doesn't say all of them, it just says in this interval. All right, and some of you know I like to use colors in my class as well, so you'll probably note that I'm kind of going different colors here on different problems here. I always try to encourage students to use colors in class. So what we're going to do, whenever you attack a square, we're going to go ahead and say, take the square root of both sides of this equation. Now, I don't know how many of you have missed this in algebra and other courses, but let's go back to here. Whenever you have a quadratic equation, a square in here and you go to solve this you have to remember quadratic equations usually have two answers and students oh they miss this so much plus or minus so be very careful and trig same deal here all right so we're going to say when you take the square root of tangent squared x you get tangent x equals plus or minus one all right, now let me go ahead and do both all solutions and the ones thereafter here, because I always like to do them both so we can compare and contrast here. Now, if, if you know your circle, you know that in order for the tangent to be one, and again, if you took the inverse tangent or arc tangent of both sides, your calculator would give you stuff, all right? Not everything, but some stuff. <laughs> angles. I shouldn't call that stuff. It's not very mathematically correct of me, but I'm sorry about that. All right. So we know at pi over four, that's where we have the X and Y values that match up and would give you a value of one. Now, where's the other places? One or negative one, Young. So look at this. We're, we're going to go all the way around the circle here. And Again, better know your, your circle here to get these answers. So if they just want us to solve between the interval of 0 to 2 pi, here's our four solutions. Pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. But what if I wanted to write all solutions here? All right. I'm going to come over here and say, well, x would equal pi over 4. Now, you wouldn't just keep saying plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, n, like we have in the past, because these answers are equidistant apart, and actually these answers are 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians apart. So if you write this, pi over 4 plus pi over 2 n, it will, have, it will cover all these solutions and more. So if you just keep adding pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2, this would be all solutions versus what they want in this. Like if you're entering these answers for your homework or something like that, it would be just these four answers. And what I, I told my lecture classes, what I suggest students do is copy and paste um, when you get a big string like this, start copying and pasting those, and then you can just alter the numbers and stuff in the numerator and denominator, and that will help your cause as well. All right, example five here. Let's look at this one. Great Scott Young, you haven't done anything with a secant in it yet, a secant squared. And look at this. I want the answers from 0 to 2 pi, although we will write it in both formats like we did up here. All solutions and the ones from 0 to 2 pi. So again, whenever you have a trigonometric equation, you want to get that trigonometric function, in this case, the secant square by itself. So we're going to add 16 to both sides and then divide both sides by 4. Now, Young, how does that help me? Secant square x equals 4. Hmm. Now, you have to know your identities here. This is why I've been after y'all not only to learn your angles, but key identities in order to solve these equations. So remember, you need to know the reciprocal of secant square, which in this case is going to be cosine square x. So I'm just taking the reciprocal of this, 
which allows me to take the reciprocal of this. So if you take the reciprocal of both sides of an equation, you're still going to get something true and equal. Now what, Young? Now what? Take the square root of both sides. Okay, so the cosine x, I always like to stop students in class and says equal, and you don't know how many students will say one half, one half, young, and I'll go no, plus or minus one half, and I'll go crazy on that. My students watching this will tell you that too, all right? So again, now, where are these angles we're after? We'll write them both globally, and we'll write them between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so the cosine of x is one half here, or negative one half, I'm sorry to say, here, here, and here. All right, so where are those at, young? Where are those at? Well, it would be pi over three radians, two pi over three radians, four pi over three radians, and five pi over three radians. So if they want these answers, from 0 to 2 pi, you're going to come over here and say, all right, I got you. Now, see, if you had copied and pasted this and you just pasted that in here, it would be much easier for you just to go through and maybe change this 4 to a 3 and, and the, when you enter your answers and, and just go through there rather than have to type all these again and again. So maybe just a little help there. Now, how would we write this globally, Young? Well, notice these are not pi over 2 apart. Um, these are only pi over 3 apart if you subtracted these two angles. And then these are 2 pi over 3 apart, pi over 3. So these you kind of have to look at if you're writing the global answers. In case you have one like this in the homework, you would say, well, I can get that first one plus pi n, and that would give me these. These are 180 degrees apart here, a semicircle apart, um, if you did it that way. Or you, then you could take the second one and say it's 2 pi over 3 plus pi n, and that would give you the second two. See, so again, when n is 0, you get this one. n is 0, you get this one. When you add pi here, add pi, and then you could keep going forever and ever, both positive and negative directions on this. And once again, will these check? Yes, you can check those on your calculators. And my students will tell you I like to go check, 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 check. <laughs> Continuing, the next two examples, we're going to look at some that are factored and some that require being factored in order to solve and get our answers. Again, similar to what you might find in algebra. All right, so the first one, if you notice, is a factored uh, expression in terms of uh, trigonometric um, equations here. Now, I don't remember, I think you should remember this from algebra. Let's say we had 2x plus 5. Yes, I used a different color again. And let's say you had x minus 1 equals 0, and you are solving this algebraic equation. This is called the zero product principle. You have two things multiplied together that equal 0. So remember the algebraic concept here is you would take each one of these items, set them equal to 0, and solve and go from there to get your two answers. Now, same thing here, we're going to go ahead and take each one of these, tangent theta minus 1, set it equal to 0, or the cosine theta plus 1 equals 0, and then solve and get our solutions again from 0 to 2 pi, but we'll put all of them just because we're that good. All right, so let's go ahead on this left equation and add 1 to both sides, so the tangent of theta is going to equal 1. Now, where does this happen? Well, if you take the arctan or the inverse tan of both sides, and hopefully you're starting to get a good idea now of where we're at. So I'll go ahead and put the circle here on this side of the equation. Now, where is the tangent positive one at? Now, remember, tangent it is positive both in which two quadrants? The first, where we get pi over 4 radians, and yeah, down here at 5 pi over 4, where both the square root of 2 over 2 are negative, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root, that gives you the positive 1. Now, if we were writing the global answers to this one, 
theta would equal, let's see if y'all can get this, if you need to pause the video or anything, pi over 4 plus what? If I wrote all the answers, pi n, I hope you put, those are pi apart, all right? But now the answers we want are the ones showing here. We'll write those as well. Subtract one from both sides. So you'll get the cosine of theta equals negative one. And where is the cosine negative one at? I hope you know we're over here on what? Pi. So theta on this one, if you took the inverse cosine, arc cosine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or you know your circle, it just saves you so much time if you know your circle, pi. Okay, now if you wanted to write that globally, the next time you would land on pi, you would have to say pi plus 2 pi n, okay, on that one to keep doing it. But I think y'all are getting the hang of it here, so we will just write these four answers here. Theta equals pi, uh, pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4. So that would work there. All right, now example seven, this one is not factored like example six was. Now, again, if you're thinking algebra, you may have seen some trinomials in algebra that you would factor like this and you would break those up by unfoiling. What I like to say is, is factoring the trinomial. Now, if you think about your algebra here, what would you have? Well, to get 2x squared, you would have to have 2x and x. And then to get a 1, a negative 1, well, one of these would have to be positive, one would have to be negative. So I would say to get a plus x in the middle, you would have to put the plus on this one, the minus here. So these would foil back and check to give you this trinomial. So when we do this in trigonometry, there are some parallels with algebra. We're just going to say instead of 2x and x to get 2x squared, we're going to say 2 cosine x times cosine x to get 2 cosine square x, and then minus 1 plus 1. Yeah, I don't know if you notice the hat I'm wearing on this video. This is says just win, baby. This is my Raider hat for the new Las Vegas Raiders coming up. So I had to point that out to the students here. I'll get a, maybe a close-up on that one. Um, if you're Ra not Raider fans out there, don't be haters. Don't be Raider haters. All right, so let me go ahead and pick this problem back up. Um, take each one of these, set it equal to zero. and solve for x. So we'll just go ahead and get this thing lined up here. And then we will get on to some more examples. Hey, this one's starting to look a lot like this part up here. Woohoo! It's actually got the same thing in it. Did I do that on purpose? I don't even think I did. So we can get the same answer to this angle. Just look up top there. It's going to be pi again. Okay. Um, Divide this by 2, and I think we might have even seen this one earlier in the video. Where is the cosine x equal to 1 half at? I think we have seen this one by Joe. It is here and here at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. Okay. Again, you could take the inverse or arc cosine. So the answers to this one I think they're looking for x equals pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and pi. Now, if you enter this in your homework and it gives you the sorry, and you're feeling pretty good, maybe one of these three answers don't check when you plug it back in here in radians. Uh, I'm just going to take pi and check it. I Just off the top of my head here, I don't know if pi is going to work or not, but let's just plug it in here. What is 2 times the cosine square of pi plus the cosine of pi minus 1? Is that going to be 0? Well, um, the cosine squared of pi, well, remember the cosine of pi is negative 1, and if you square it, you'll get 1 times 2 is 2, plus the cosine of pi is minus 1, so you get minus 1 minus 1, so indeed, that will check. And I do believe the other two will as well. But again, check, 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 check. 
for examples eight and nine, we're going to throw a little bit different twist at you all this time, and it says the following equation contains multiple angles. And notice both of these examples are just don't have theta or x or whatever else we've been calling these angles, but this one has two theta, this one has four x. And what happens is, instead of having your normal amount of angles here, like most of these we have seen have had like two solutions for x and y, some of them a little more depending. But when you put a two in here, you end up with double the solutions. When you put a four in here, oh my gracious, four times the solutions. All right, so again, they want us to solve and find the equation in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So again, I suggest you always find all solutions first and go from there. So what we're going to do in both of these, kind of attack them similarly, is we're going to take the inverse sine, again, to get to the angle, or arc sine, which undoes the sine. And instead of giving us just theta, see, this gives us 2 theta equals where is the sine one half. I think we've actually seen that in the videos before. When you do enough of these, you will see a lot of these. So we're here and here at pi over six. So here's how we're going to write this. If this was just theta and we were writing all the answers, we would put five pi over six plus two pi n, or we will put two theta equals five pi over six plus two pi n. Now, on these, when you divide by 2, both sides, interesting things happen. I don't know how interesting you think there are, but <laughs> we'll do them anyway. <laughs> All right, so theta, and I always have students in my classes that have trouble with fractions. Pi over 6 divided by 2 is pi over 12 plus pi n is the first, this would be global answer for all of these, which the global answer, by the way, is actually easier than going back and finding all of these angles between 0 and 2 pi. So if you're showing your work on test and so forth, if you got to here, you would definitely get some partial credit from your instructor, I think, if you messed up the uh, angles we're going to get for the answer. Now, what we want to do, it says find all the equations, all the angles from 0 to 2 pi. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to let n be 0. Okay, remember n is an integer. And when n is 0, we're going to get pi over 12 plus 0 times pi is 0. So that's one answer. Or 5 pi over 12, if that's 0, would be the second answer. Okay, now when n equals 1, we're going to end up with the angle theta equals pi over 12 plus pi times 1 is pi, which would give us 13 pi over 12. And similarly over here, if n is 1, theta would equal 5 pi over 12. Sorry about that. My phone was ringing. <laughs> I had to pause in the middle of there. When you're teaching at home, sometimes these things happen. Uh, hold that call, please. All right. And then plus um, pi over 1 is pi. So this would give us uh, 12 pi over 12 plus 5 or 12 will be 17 pi over 12. Now, do you all see that if I go n equals 2 next, I would be beyond 2 pi. See, this would be 2 pi plus another pi over 12. So that's when you know you're done. So our answers that they're after here, theta, and these answers would again check, is pi over 12, um, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12, which would all check if you plugged it back in here. All right, same deal on this one. Now, this one's going to have eight solutions. So if you are, if you just want to go crazy, hold on. It's going to be a wild ride here. We're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides here. And again, it says the following equation contains multiple angles. So you're going to say 4x equals where is the cosine minus square root of 2 over 2 x being negative here and here. So you should end up with 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, or 4x equals 
5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And again, on these, you're going to have to divide everything by 4. So this is going to quadruple your amount of answers here. Now, would I give you one this vicious on the test? Maybe not with the 4x, but definitely up here on the top, I might do it. <laughs> Just because I want you all to be able to reason things out. All right, so x is going to equal 3 pi over 4 divided by 4 is 3 pi over 16 plus pi over 2n. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. And in our second debacle down here, we'll get 5 pi over 16 plus pi over 2n. Now, if you think about it, pi over 2 here, if you changed it into sixteenths, would be 8 pi over 16n. If you wanted to think about multiplying top and bottom here by 8, so what we're going to do is just keep adding 8 pi over 16 to these guys until we don't go past 2 pi. All right, and again, we could let n equal 0. We could play this game as well. And when n is 0 here, pi over 2 times 0 is 0, we're going to get the first two answers, 3 pi over 16 and 5 pi over 16. Okay. Now when n equals 1, that's adding pi over 2 or 8 pi over 16 to each of these. So 8 pi over 16 and 3 pi over 16 would be 11 pi over 16. And 8 and 5 would be 13 pi over 16. Now, do you see the angles here? We haven't even hit pi yet. So we're not only not to 2 pi, we're not even to 1 pi yet by just letting these answers happen. So when n equals 2, so this is like one of the most vicious ones in the section, all right, we're going to add another 8 pi over 16 or pi over 2 to this. So 8 pi plus 11 pi would be 19 pi over 16. And another 8 pi here would be uh, 21 pi over 16. And then still not to 2 pi yet, so we have to get two more. n equals 3. We'll add another 8 pi over 16 to this. So 9 and 8 would be 27 pi over 16. And another 8 here would be 29 pi over 16. So all eight of these are your answer. Now, do you see if I put another 8 pi over 16 in here, I would go past 32 pi over 16, and, and that would go outside my range. So actually, the global answers on this one were much nicer than having to go through and do all of that. All right, in examples 10 and 11, these are a couple different types of... Um, trigonometric equations we're going to look at. So they may give you ones that say solve the equation in this interval. Now the nice thing is these aren't those multiple angle ones. These are just single angle ones. But they may just give you a number here and ask you to solve and get this. So again, we're going to go ahead and take on this one the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead here, and let's go ahead and change these radian values you know and love. Pi over 2 would be 1.57. Pi would be 3.14. Now, when you do that on your calculator, and I've done this to save a little time, and it wants you to round these four decimal places, one angle you get, you should get this on your calculator rounded four places, would be 0.57. Eight, three. So they're saying at what angle is the sine equal to this value? And th this is in radians, of course. So let's go ahead and put radians here. Now, this would be over here in the first quadrant, you see. So 0 0.5783, I'm just going to guesstimate, would be about in this ballpark right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put that. So your calculator gives you that one. But, oh, ladies and gentlemen, there is another y value over here that is also going to give you 0.5466 when you input it in your calculator. Now, how do you get it? So what I'm looking at here is from zero on the x-axis, zero radians to here is 0.5783. So I'm also saying this would be 0.5783, but notice we're gonna have to subtract that, this distance from pi to get this other value. 
So I put pi minus 0.5783. And what I ended up with on that one was 2. My, my pencil's not moving now. <laughs> All right. Or 2.5. Six three three radians. So if you put both of these in for x, you're going to get a number. Now remember, we rounded these very close to 0.5466. So remember, sine means y. Now, Young, what if they do this with cosine? All right, well, we'll go ahead and take the inverse cosine of both sides. Okay, so x would be the inverse cosine. Now, where's the inverse cosine exist? Now, remember, and you may get some other problems like this in the homework, the inverse sine only exists um, from pi over 2, um, negative pi over 2, the range to pi over 2 in this first to fourth quadrant, whenever you're doing the inverse. Inverse cosine, the range is 0 to pi. So when you put that in your calculator, what I ended up with, is x equals, and it's saying at what angle is the cosine negative two-thirds, and rounding it four places, I got 2.3005, which I put about over here. Again, this is 1.57. 3.14, and then you could even do 3 pi over 2 is about 4.71. So um, the other x value, now remember cosine, you're matching up the x-axis here, whereas with the sine up here, you were matching up the y-axis. So let me come down here. This would be our other angle. So in other words, if this is 1.57 from here to here, that will give me negative two-thirds when I plug it in for x. How do I get this other one? Well, what I did is I subtracted 2 pi. So I went all the way around the circle, and I went 2 pi. So you have to kind of be really careful when you do these and know where you're at on the circle. Okay, and make sure your rounding's good too. But, oh my gracious, the, the rounding on these will, will get you. So 39 Eight two seven. So this would be your two answers for x on that. Of course, let's put radians on those as well. Okay, so I think we're down to our last example. Woohoo! And I saved the best to last. Way do you see it? All right, for our final example here, example 12, let's look at this uh, trigonometric equation. It says solve the equation on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, cosine squared x minus 9 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now let's go back to your old algebra days here. What happened here when you had x squared minus 9x minus 1 equals zero. You could not factor that. Oh my gracious, how do we learn to solve it? Well, you could either complete the square or use what is called the famous quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I think everyone should see on this one that a is going to be 1, the number in front of x squared, b negative 9, and C, negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in real quick and come back. All right, now that's the fun of being able to teach online and using videos. Boop, it's all done. So I went ahead and I plugged in the formula, and here's the two answers I got to if this were just x. But remember, this is not just x, and here's where the trigonometric identities come in, or trigonometric values. We'll just throw the cosine back in front of there. And what we want to do to solve for x now, Young, you're not going to do it. You're not. Yes, I am. I'm going to take the inverse cosine of both sides of this equation. Now, what happens here when you say x is the inverse cosine of 9 plus the square root of 85 over 2, your calculator is going to be going, hmm? all right, because that value, if you do it on your calculator, is over 9. It's like 9.1098 if we round this four places. Remember, the inverse sign can't be a number larger or smaller. It's got to be between negative 1 and 1. So here's one of those problems I told you early on in the lesson 
you may not have a solution to. Not all trigonometric equations have an answer, so this one's no solution. But, ladies and gentlemen, don't fear, because if you take the inverse cosine of 9 minus the square root of 85 over 2, and we'll go ahead and round that down, we'll say that is going to equal rounded four places, negative 0 0.109. Eight. Okay, well, that's, I'm sorry, that's what this amounts to, my bad. Uh, inverse cosine of negative 0 0.1098. Now, again, where is the cosine negative? They're saying at what angle is the cosine going to be negative 0 0.1098? And when you put that in your calculator, it is going to be, since that's negative, a second quadrant angle, in this case, 1.6808. So that's why we were doing those problems um, before this, okay, is to kind of get the feel for these other type angles here. So 1.6808 would kind of be closer to me up here, all right, but there is yet another X value that will give you that answer. All right, now how do you think I'm going to get it from this? I'm going to take this, which is the same here, and subtract 2 pi. So the other answer, if I take 2 pi, subtract the 1.6808, will give me 4.6024. So you may see one of these really challenging ones in your homework, but you know the calculus instructors always tell us it's the algebra as much as the trig that can hurt you in calculus. So I want to make sure your algebra skills are solid in addition to your trig skills. All right, this is it for solving trigonometric equation. Bob Young signing off. Go Raiders.